What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back for part number three of our live Pokemon Showdown Uber session. In the last part, we had a nice 50 turn battle basically uh, that was kind of hacks ridden with misses and paralysis, but it was fun. It came down to the final turns, so that's always exciting. We'll see if we can uh, live up to that here in part number three. Anyway, as we're getting started today, uh, just a friendly reminder in case you guys would like to show your support to the channel and the series and all that fun stuff, you can do so by clicking that like button right below this video that always helps out a lot and so do your comments suggestions all of those things i always look forward to uh, reading through the comment section uh, for all that stuff as i feel like i have something weird in my throat i feel like this like every five videos or so i feel like i just have like a giant lump in my throat or something anyway uh, this is kind of an interesting team i see shedinja so i'm going to set up stealth rocks and he ends up just switching in the shedinja expecting that which is fine because I can just whirlwind you out. Um, just depends on whether or not I want to throw up a wish first. I mean, I don't know if I necessarily want you to just set up swords dances all over the place if you're into that. Soul Switch in Lugia. And he goes for Shadow Sneak that does a whopping 8% and only a net gain of 1% damage thanks to uh, the lefties. And he goes for Fury Swipes. Okay, this person clearly is not as serious as... I originally thought. I mean, you're using a Shedinja in Uber, so I don't know how serious, I mean, you can be with that. I, mean, I guess you can be. I mean, I have a Golduck, so I can't really judge anyone. He does go for the T-Wave as I switch in Zekrom, because that was too easy to predict. And now I can just outrage everything, I guess. Or I can Volt Switch. I'll Volt Switch. And he opts to go into the Superior. Outrage would have killed that, but I don't want to be locked into Outrage and then have Sableye come in and Willow me. Not interested in that. So I'll go into Kyurem here because Superior just dies to an Ice Beam. He really has nothing to switch in. I mean, unless he wants to switch in the Shedinja, which just dies due to the Stealth Rocks. So I don't want to play with the, you know, the, the Focus Sash shenanigans. So Stealth Rock just kills it and we'll be done with it. And Ho-Oh takes 50%. So I kind of feel like this is going to be a, a, a part where we have multiple battles because I don't think this is going to last too long. He does have the Ditto, though, which is kind of scary. He's probably just going to drop a Draco. So I'll go into Clefable. And yeah, there's the Draco, so we're immune to that. And he has Lefties. I don't know why I didn't notice that before, but uh, yeah, Lefties Ditto. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of cool, I guess. I'll throw up a Wish, predicting a Switch, and he does just sacrifice his Shedinja, which is perfect because now we can uh, pass a wish into whatever we want, and he has an even HP number on a Ho-Oh, <laughs> which is kind of amusing. I've done that before, though. I think I have an even HP number on my Lugia, actually. So again, I can't judge. I could be ballsy and switch in Zekrom on a potential Sacred Fire, and that's what I'm gonna do. And he goes for Giga Drain. Okay, so we're gonna get all that HP back. And now he just, I mean, we could just outrage anyway, I guess. So at this point, we pretty much just won. <laughs> I mean, unless he's really going to take it back with lefties ditto. Oh, just kidding. He forfeited. All right. So we're up to 1250 on the ladder, which is not very high, but it's better than the bottom, I guess. Bottom, bottom. So we'll search for another battle as that only lasted about like three minutes or so. And hopefully this one lasts a little bit longer. This looks like a little bit more of a serious team. This is actually quite a spooky team. So he's got Mewtwo, Thunderous, Xerneas, Arceus, Primal Groudon, most likely, and a Kyurem White. A lot of shiny Pokemon, too. So that Xerneas immediately strikes me as a threat. Um, if I have Golduck in, that would help because I can just encore him into Geomancy and then set up with Lucario. He is going to start off with Arceus though, and I will throw up a Stealth Rock as he just goes for Swords Dance. People do this all the time. They always just... He's just going to keep setting up Swords Dances on an unaware Pokemon. I mean, I know a lot of them carry... Uh, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did he just go for Dragon Claw on a Clefable? Am I missing something? Now he goes for Extreme Speed. After seeing that damage, watch him dra or not Dragon Claw, watch him Swords Dance again. Nope, he's gonna recover. Okay. 
Because people, like, I don't know. I, I don't know why they always set up on Clefable when it has the chance to have Unaware. It's like setting up on Quagsire. I mean, to be fair, I guess... And there he goes with the Swords Dance. But to be fair, I guess Quagsire really only ever runs the Unaware. Clefable can run other things. But if you're not sure, why would you waste the time setting up until you find out? I don't know, that's just me. I guess I shouldn't be judging other people. So, if he wants to play this game where he's just going to stay in with his plus six Arceus, I mean, that's fine. Because he's going to run out of extreme speeds. You only have eight of those. It's sad that he has recover, otherwise we would just straight up beat him one-on-one. -on -one. But if his only other coverage move is Dragon Claw, which... Wait, we've seen the whole set. I'm stupid, I can't even count to four. <laughs> four moves, yeah. Recover, Swords Dance, Dragon Claw, Extreme Speed. So, yeah, we're going to win this. We're going to win this matchup one-on-one, uh, -on -one. so either you're going to switch out and save those extreme speeds for later, or you're just going to stay in and eventually lose your Arceus. Because I'll just start going for Stealth Rock meaninglessly. I mean, he can go for Swords Dance, and that's fine, but eventually you're going to have to use extreme speed, and eventually it's going to run out of PP. So I I'm, not, I'm not above PP stalling your Arceus. I don't understand why you wanted to set up to plus six to begin with on a Clefable, but uh, all right. So hopefully this doesn't last too long. Otherwise, I'll just cut this part of the battle out um, because it's not exactly interesting to watch me spam moves that don't do anything. So how many times has he gone for extreme speed? He has to have used at least half. I don't want to use up all my wishes and protects either. So we need to be somewhat careful. I mean, I feel like I can be kind of liberal with it just because Clefable doesn't last that long in battle anyway, and he doesn't have anything specific that I want to counter. Uh, there we go. He is going to switch. Okay, fair enough. So he's going to go into the Groudon as I went for the Meaningless Protect, and we're just about at full health, and we have Rocks up, so that kind of helps a lot. And now we can switch in Golduck, who... Hopefully he can do something. I'm going to protect to see what he does first. As he goes for the Precipice Blades. I don't know if Golduck can take that. Because I don't remember what the base power is on that. Is it 120? I don't even know. I'm going to go into Lugia because Lugia uh, obviously can be immune to the Precipice Blades. And we can Whirlwind you out and not have to worry about it. And he does switch back into Arceus to, I guess, set up more Swords Dances. But we're going to Whirlwind them right back into the Groudon. Okay then. We can Aeroblast to see how much that will do, but I kind of want to just Whirlwind again. So that's what I'm going to do. I mean, I don't know what this thing would normally carry. Maybe like Fire Punch, Lava Plume, something along those lines. And I have my multi-scale attack, so I'm not really worried about either of those. Oh, he carries Thunder Punch. Okay, then. So we're going to Whirlwind you out. Out comes the Mewtwo. And I would love to T-Wave you. Because Mewtwo can be a problem. As he goes for the T-Bowl, that does 43%. We can take another one of those. And thankfully, we get off the T-Wave. Kind of want to roost now. But we can take another one, so I'll go for an Aeroblast. And he just goes for the T-Bowl again, okay? So we take that. It's kind of interesting that this is not a Mega Mewtwo. Because nothing else on his team is a Mega. Interesting. Interesting! I guess he just doesn't have a Mega then. Kind of curious what item he's holding. We didn't see lefties. Didn't see life orb. Maybe he's specs? Oh no, he does mega evolve. He was just waiting. Okay, and he's fully paralyzed. I feel like I get really lucky with the amount of uh, full paralysis turns that I get. Or at least recently. So we'll go for an arrow blast. It does 25%. Goes for the T-Bolt. And he gets the paralysis on that. Which is fine because Lugia is slow to begin with. And I'll Whirlwind you out now, because I don't think an aero, another Aero Blast will kill, unless we got a higher roll, and I don't trust that. So I'll just get rid of you. And out comes the Arceus. And we can Whirlwind you out, too, because you're probably going to set up Swords Dances. Just kidding, you went for the Dragon Claw. Okay, my prediction game is bad. It's quite bad. So I think I'm just... We can just let Lugia go down here. He just kill us with an Ice Beam, that's fine. Yeah, he just drops a Draco, and Seabird is dead, but now we have an opportunity to do a couple of things. We could 
get a safe switch into Golduck and see if he'll switch in Groudon. We could go into Zeke here and just unleash some powerful outrages slash bolt strikes. Um, or we can just go into Lucario and set up a sub, which is kind of tempting. I don't think I want to go uh, for outrage when Xerneas is still around, so we need to be kind of careful about that. Um, yeah, the Groudon and the Xerneas still being around is a problem. We need to get rid of one of those so that he doesn't have an immunity to either one of my uh, my moves on Zekrom. So I will go into Kirim White here because we know we outspeed and he's going to have to switch something in. I mean, it would kind of make sense to switch in Mewtwo here and let it die since it's really not going to be of any use to you anymore. And, oh, he just stays in and drops another Draco. Okay, then. So you're just going to let this thing die. Hmm. I mean, I wanted to go for Ice Beam in case Xerneas came in to at least deal some decent-ish damage to it. But, I mean, I guess if you're just going to drop a Draco, that's fine. Um... That did a lot of damage, too, even at minus two. And now he's at minus four. So we could go into Golduck. We can go into whatever we want. Maybe he's locked in? Specs, maybe? So let's go into Clefable. Uh, he's going to switch into Xerneas. Now he goes into the Xerneas. Okay. So... Let me guess. He's going to go for Geomancy? Possibly? I mean, setting up on the unaware Clefable again? Are we going to just do this whole dance all over again? <laughs> I hope not. This battle has been a whole lot of uh, meaningless stall. And not even Toxic stall. No, he goes for the Moonblast. It's a good decision. And we get a little bit lucky with the special attack drop there. Because now we can definitely take another hit. Uh, just kidding. What? What was that damage roll? It went from 50% on the first turn to 55% on the second turn at minus one. What? I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. That's crazy. I guess I should have protected. I guess, I mean, I, I don't know. That's pretty uh, kooky. Pretty kooky. My voice just cracked. Um, so, yes, we should uh, force this thing out because he's at minus one special attack. So we should be able to set up a sub here. And then whatever comes in, uh, is going to get destroyed. Hopefully, Groudon. That would be great. So we'll set up the sub. And, oh, he stays in to go for the Focus Blast. At minus... What are you... Why is he staying in? I mean, what if I had Flash Cannon? You'd just be dead. Pretty sure. We can set up another sub and see if he switches this turn. I mean, eventually, you're gonna just miss a Focus Blast if you keep, wanna if you keep trying to play that game. Uh, I'm going to go for a sub here. No, he doesn't switch. Okay. And he does go for the Focus Blast, and he misses. So we get a little bit lucky there. Because I don't think Bullet Punch kills from there. But now I'm just going to go for Focus Punch. So anything that wants to switch in, even the Thunderous, uh, is going to get to it KO'd by that. And he goes for the Geomancy now. Interestingly enough, I don't know why you wouldn't choose to break my sub this turn. Because now Bullet Punch definitely uh, KOs. So we still are behind our sub, and Xerneas is gone, which means we can spam Outrage. Yay. It's great, because we outspeed Groudon, and that's a 2 at KO. So this is uh, this has turned out to be very, very good. Oh, and he just goes into Groudon now. We'll see how much Focus Punch does to this thing. He's going to break our sub with the uh, Precipice Blades, I guess. Yep, that's what he goes for. And that does 64% to Groudon here, and even though Bullet Punch is a resisted hit, it's going to take this thing out. So, Sub Punch Mega Lucario is putting in a lot of work here. A lot of work. So Xerneas and Groudon are both out of the way, so he has no immunities to Zekrom's attacks, which is perfect. That is just what I wanted. This is setting him up for uh, a disaster. Yes, it is. Um... I don't know what this thing's going to want to do. It does have Prankster, so it can priority, like, T-Wave me. kind of feel like that's what he wants to do. So I'm kind of tempted to just switch in Zekrom here. We could also just sacrifice... Uh, let's see. I'm not going to sacrifice. I'm going to just... I'm just going to go and switch into Zekrom. And he goes for the Thunder. Okay. All right, then. 
the sets here are kind of kind of weird. But I'm not uh, not a, the type of person to judge there because my sets are ridiculous and laughable a lot of times. So yeah. So he goes for the HP Ice, which does this kind of a decent amount of damage there. It's like 42%, and Outrage is going to kill a couple of things here, most likely, because that Arceus is a bulky variant with Recover, so we should outspeed it. Because I'm pretty sure he's not running max speed and Recover, so this thing should just die. Because I think we can take an Extreme Speed. Oh, he doesn't even go for it, he just dies to an Outrage. All right, so this team is in trouble here because Mewtwo dies when it comes back in, and oh no, it doesn't. Okay, for some reason I thought he had less HP than that. Okay, I mean I guess we'll just kill Mewtwo. So he's trying to get rid of the Outrage turns here, but that Curum, I don't think it's scarfed. I mean he's he's locked in though because he just kept spamming Draco. Maybe he is scarf. I don't remember. Oh, doesn't matter. Rocks are up and he was below 25%. Uh, so he just goes down and that is going to be the battle. That was a really weird game. That was a really weird game. Um, anyway, we're inching closer to the 1300 mark after getting uh, 18 from that. So that was pretty cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We still got two parts left to go. So we'll see if we can get Golduck some work because I really just want to see it kill something quite badly on camera. That's what I want. It killed so many things before I started recording. Uh, anyway, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, please make sure you're leaving a like rating or a comment or whatever you would like to do, of course, and I will see you all next time. And until then, game on.